Malaysia is a land that celebrates in every way possible its great diversity. The thing that makes this country tick is culture, and there's a lot of it everywhere. Downtown, in the heart of its cities. In the soul of its small towns. I want to wish everyone a gong si fa tai. Across its rural heartlands, right into the thick of its forests. Mother, 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 mother nature. Yeah, forest, I love you. And this makes it by far one of the best places to party. I'm Denise Keller. And now I'm Jamie Aditya, and this is our passage to Malaysia. Whenever I'm in Malaysia, I never have a problem keeping myself amused. That's because I know Malaysians always have something to celebrate. In a land of many colorful festivals, there's always something on. And of course, I'm always available to join in. Starting right here in Kuala Lumpur. As Malaysia's bustling capital, Kale is home to a mix of cultures that give this thriving city its cosmopolitan vibe. It's definitely one of the places you want to be in when Malaysia's mostly South Indian Hindus celebrate one of the most spectacular festivals in the country. It's the eve of Thai Pusum and Hindus all over the country are getting ready for this great event. Now my Thai Pusum experience starts here at this little temple in Brickfields, KL. Tucked away behind KL's busy streets, this small family-run Hindu temple is dedicated to the goddess Kali. Started 80 years ago by her mother, today Amma Gauri leads the prayers and rituals. For the last month, Amma's been helping devotees prepare themselves for a powerful state of trance. Although mainly Kali worshippers, Amma's family are undertaking these rituals in honor of Lord Murugan, the Hindu god in whose honor Taipusam is celebrated. By entering a trance, believers are able to carry huge physical burdens. How they do this has always been a mystery to me. This time, I'll be joining Amma's family on their amazing rite of passage. Oh, Murugan. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. A special gift on Lord, from Lord Muruga, especially our festive season of Thaipusam. You have to fast for 30 days to fulfill your vow. You have to only for one meal a day. One meal a day. One meal a day. When sleeping time, you have to sleep on the floor, it's just a piece of cloth. You have to, you should not be having any luxury. Yeah. You have to sacrifice everything. I see, I see. You have to be very calm, and not in anger. Meditation too? Yes, daily. I've seen uh, in the photos, uh, Thai Pusam, yes. people piercing themselves and you know, no, they're not bleeding. Yes. Six feet. Mm. She also has pierced for six ah. feet. Six feet. Yes. Oh. You, you, you will succeed after Skewer. doing all this prayer for 30 days. And you will not be having any pain. If you follow the guideline very strictly, when they pierce it, and you, there won't be any blood bleeding. And you felt no pain? No, no it's pain. painless. You will not feel any Incredible. So, it works! <laughs> Preparations have been intense, and for good reason, given what lies ahead. Thai Pusam is held on the full moon of the Tamil month of Thai. Hindus from KL and the surrounding states congregate right in the heart of the city to start a 13-kilometer procession to the Batu Caves. 
a temple on the outskirts of the city dedicated to Lord Murugan. Rallying around a leading chariot, the huge crowd is made up of young and old from all walks of life, all bearing offerings in the form of milk. Thousands of coconuts are smashed on the ground, symbolizing the clearing of the path ahead. Believers will walk all through the night, every step drawing them closer into a deep state of trance. When they finally arrive at their destination, many will be ready to carry out the most incredible physical acts. At the break of day, Hindu devotees who have walked all through the night from downtown Kuala Lumpur finally arrive at the Batu Caves temple on the outskirts of the city. Before carrying offerings up 300 steps into the cave, worshippers prepare for the final push into a full state of trance. It's the morning of Thaipusam, and over a million people have gathered here from all over Malaysia to pay their respects to Lord Murugan. Now, for the devotees who are, you know, about to enter a trance, well, it starts here first with a cleansing ritual. In fact, Amma is over there. She's about to go through the same ritual herself, and in doing so, help her devotees enter the trance. Oh, it almost feels like I'm, feel like I'm in trance as well. Can you feel that rhythm? It's infectious. Amma draws the rest of her family into their trances, spurred on by the signature chant, Vel Vel. On the surface, Tai Pusam may look like a big, chaotic, exotic spectacle. But by following Amma's family up close, I get to see that there's nothing superficial about what goes on here. And even this close, it's still a mystery. How do they not feel the pain? Sure, many say it's a form of hypnosis, mind over matter, but then how come they don't bleed? Amma and her family are well into their trance now. It's like they're on autopilot and nothing is gonna get in their way. We're ready to join the huge crowds making their way up a steep incline into the sacred cave temple. So I've started the ascent of over 300 stairs into the Batu Caves. And uh, I just stopped for a little breather, you know, but uh, I'm carrying nothing but my PR, so the other people are carrying you know, huge loads. That's some serious faith there. These cavities are huge canopies decorated with peacock feathers sitting on hard steel rods carried by just one person. But when they're in trance, these guys can handle intense physical burdens, all in the hope Lord Murugan answers their prayers. I've lost Amma Gaudi. She really has the power. She's powered right past me. I made it. But I can't imagine doing that whole thing with like five spears stuck into me, attached to and bearing the weight of a, a, a big, great, Peacock plumed cavity. Incredible. I'm gonna go look for Amma now. Amma Gaudi? Inside the cathedral chamber of the cave temple, devotees bearing their offerings reach the apex of their Taipusam rituals. For many, the feeling of finally releasing their burden and sacrifice is totally overwhelming. I finally tracked down Amma and her family. After their prayers and offerings, she carefully coaches them out of their trance. As we make our way out, the weird thing is how none of them seem at all tired. So Amma, how do you feel? Very good, very nice. Very good? No tired? No tired. Not tired at all? Sun only. only the sun, it's hot, yeah? Yes. <laughs> but before, when you're in a trance, you don't feel the sun. And when you went up inside there, and the trance is, uh, you, you come out of the trance, 
Is it like a, a new beginning, start fresh? Fresh already. Uh, I think I you. Okay, everything. <laughs> <laughs> wow, fantastic. You know, Amai, I just want to say thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much because uh, if I didn't meet you, I would not feel so wonderful today on this uh, Thai Pusam. I had a wonderful time here today. Nandri, Nandri, thank you so much. <laughs> Every year, Thai Pusam keeps drawing bigger crowds. I've seen it up close and I've been right in the middle of the action with a million other people. But Thai Pusam is still a mystery to me, which is fine with me because that's the way I want to remember it. Malaysians don't just celebrate traditions. In fact, they'll find a reason to celebrate anything. Tonight, there's another excuse. It's actually Kuala Lumpur's birthday. KL was declared a federal territory in 1974. This is celebrated every year with a public holiday. You know, there was this guy who climbed. Oh, is that the, the French guy? The... Yeah, man. I look out through like... Did he climb up these towers? He did, bro, with his bare hands. How do you do that, bro? Even with, you know... That's Safety Man, equipment and a photo of that. This evening I'm with Donovan Toe, one of the top DJs in town. It's his job to help KL people party. You must have DJed parties all over all over the place, not just in Malaysia, right? What yeah. sets playing in, in KL apart from? Kuala Lumpur is just an amazing city. I mean, people are very, very down to earth. You know, they're not pretentious. But that's what gives KL its distinctive flavor. Later, Donovan is taking me out on the town to one of the top clubs here. Before the crowd comes out in full force, Donovan is taking me through some moves on the decks. Ah, oh, wow. That's the filter. It's like manual. Showing me how he's going to take the revelers across the stroke of midnight. My passage begins far from the hustle and bustle of Kuala Lumpur in the lush hills and valleys of North Perak. The state's royal capital Kuala Kangsa is a small town, but its exquisite architecture creates a grand and real setting. Today it continues to celebrate a rich tradition of craftsmanship and design. Right in the middle of Kuala Kangsa, this here is the first rubber tree planted in Malaysia. But this state, Perak, built its fortune on tin, and they really know how to work their metal. Perak means the silver state in Malay. Its renowned metal industry, its royal heritage, and its tradition of craftsmanship all go into making Kuala Kangsa a center for designing royal regalia and medals in Malaysia. See? Now if I really wanted to, I could have my face planted on the coin and have long lived Denise, but it's reserved for royalty. This is your library of active molds. Yes. I have mold for all states. You what about do. the state of Denise Keller? <sighs> no. no. In Malaysia, royal awards are given out on rulers' birthdays. With 13 states, Putri Rafida and her team at Mariwasa Craft are busy all year round. A lot of careful detail and painstaking precision goes into making these royal medals. With Putri rushing orders for a royal birthday, I'm not exactly helping the production line. How am I going to hire you, Denise? I know. This is so slow. I just need to practice a little more. Maybe I just hire you as tea lady. Despite my poor design skills, Putri's invited me to help her deliver the medals to the royal town of Sri Mananti in Negri Sembilan. I think we'll be at the palace by 2.30. But kena mengadap tuanku juga nak serahkan keris tu. Inside the royal town of Sri Mananti, the most striking feature is its old palace called the Istana Lama, today a royal museum. Its 99 pillars bear ornate motifs that Putri's team has incorporated in the design of the royal medals. Tuanku wanted to have this motif transferred into the design. Uh -huh. 
keeps it really traditional. Yes. So then something to do with Negris and Milan. The Astana Bissar, or main palace of Sri Mananti, is the official residence of the ruler, Twankup Muris. As well as medals, His Royal Highness ordered restoration work done on a prized heirloom, the Chris, a timeless symbol of Malay culture. That's the Chris. That's the Chris. Twankup's Chris. Oh, it's nice, yeah? Oh, it's beautiful. So you replated this? Yes. What we did is from silver, mm -hmm. we plated gold. Now it's in 34 karat gold plated. I like this part, you see? They have ruby. Oh, that's a ruby stone. I want to open it, but I don't dare touch it. Much to Putri's relief, Twanku seems satisfied with the work done, just in the nick of time for the big event. In every Malaysian state, a ruler's birthday is celebrated with a public holiday. The usually quiet town of Sri Mananti transforms into a hive of activity as people from all over the state come out to cheer on their ruler. Dignitaries from other states start to arrive for a ceremony rich in protocol. Time to be on my best behavior. Because as soon as the ruler arrives, I've got to help Putri's team backstage roll out the royal awards. Awards are given out in recognition of achievements and contributions to the state. Each one carries a specific title and all have been carefully cleared through layers of protocol. So there's no room for any mistakes. charge. <laughs> In a room full of achievers, I can't help but feel a little out of place here. Yes, I too have fanciful thoughts of royal recognition, but this time it looks like I just have to settle for something a little less grand. Do I, do I look like a Datin yet? No, 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 no. I'm a dot, right? A dot. A dot. <laughs> Coming up, I jump from a world of royal Malay customs into one of the biggest Chinese festivals I've ever seen. <laughs> Penang's capital, Georgetown, has for centuries drawn traders and settlers from all over the region. Hokkien communities from Fujian Province, China, played a big part in its growth as a port city. Today, the jetties they first settled in remain home to generations of clan members. Georgetown's not new to me, but its old world charm always reveals another passage waiting to be explored. And this time, my timing couldn't be better. Chinese New Year festivities last 15 days, but it's the ninth day that's most celebrated by the Hokkien clans here. This year, I've been invited to spend it with the Chu clan. This is an art form. Xi uh. do you always do this every eve of the ninth day? Do you help your mom out? Only with the simple things. The like simple this. things? <laughs> <laughs> Not come with that kind of the... Uh, I think Flowers I've been pushed down to the simple things as well. <laughs> On the ninth day of Chinese New Year, uh. for Hokkien, it's like, it's a very common that everybody will pray the duck, the chicken, the hen. Mm -hmm. Then it's like a very symbolic um, kind of praying for everyone. Oh. Tell me more about your um, clan houses. This is the Chu Jetty here all along. You're yeah. basically one big family. You can trace back your entire family back to China. Yeah, we are from Fujian, mm -hmm. and um, there's one place called Sing Wat Chun. Sing Wat Chun. Yeah, that is the place where our ancestors are from. And in fact, when they came here, they don't really have any place to live. Mm -hmm. So they just built their houses along the coast. Because when they were in China, they also lived on the coast right. by the sea. When they are starting their journey from there, they will bring one small packet of the urn, ash, mm -hmm. from the urn, okay, then once they reach here, they will put it in the urn at the front of the jetty. 
Right. There's one big urn there in the temple as well. Okay. It's to uh, like uh, to protect them, to make them they are safe on the journey. What keeps the tradition so alive? Is it the family unit? Is it the faith? people here? The people. The people here. You can see that even some of the generation like my age, 30 plus or even like late 20s, they still have that kind of spirit to help out at the temple and prepare the preparation of the praying to for tonight. Of all the offerings, there's one never missing from a Hokkien New Year. Sugarcane is a timeless reminder of an ancestral legend from China. Fleeing attacks from ruthless armies, Hokkien's took refuge among sugarcane plantations. On the ninth day of the New Year, they emerged unharmed. Coinciding with the Jade Emperor God's birthday gave them more cause for celebration. Across Georgetown, the Chinese New Year festivities coincide with the city's celebration of its UNESCO World Heritage status. These are always the busiest days of the year on the island, but the real party has yet to be unleashed. When night falls on a Hokkien New Year in Penang, demons run for cover. festivals I have seen. Yeah. Does this happen every year? Yeah. A lot of people, even tourists, like to come to Penang. Firstly, they'll come for food. Secondly, they'll come for the festivals. This year, they make it like heritage and cultural celebration together. That's my name, but he's trying to make it more ladylike by saying Oh, he's done, he's done. The stamp of approval. Oh, oh your turn. You have to sit there. Oh no. Okay. One one here, here, here. Center. Oh, center, center. Uh, I'm nervous. This is gonna get really tricky here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Back at the village jetties on Wa 